Anak. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Star Ladder Season 9. I'm LD. He's Merlini. Fresh off our show. And she is Munchkin. This is our kitten burrito. It's a tri-cast <laughs> today. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we're going to be casting EG versus Liquid Ben. This is for Star Ladder America. I don't know if these standings are 100% up to date because there were some games played earlier. Big shout out to What Is Hip for covering for us uh, while we were busy doing in the studio. Hopefully you enjoyed mm -hmm. my stirring rendition of... Uh, of Aladdin, or not Aladdin, not Pokemon, but yeah. Now, either way, EG versus Liquid, what could potentially be the match that decides the group? Yeah, I think these two are the top two contenders in Star Ladder America out of these eight teams. Evil Genius is with a perfect record right now. They will have Mason standing in for them while Fear is away. Apparently his arm injury is a little bit worse than we thought, so I think at least for the next few weeks we will see him as a consistent player for Evil Geniuses. Yeah, I know Fear, uh, like you said, needs, he's just decided to take some time off to recover. EG have kind of a long-term view with this, so maybe it hurts the results a bit. Mason's still a very strong player, but of course... He's what happened not. to him and Team Dog? I don't know. I, I think I... Once in a while, I'll admit I do peruse NA Dota, and mm -hmm. I think he said something about like having other commitments or... But, but why, then why is he playing for EG? I don't know. It's, maybe EG's just a better team, <laughs> right? You know? I have other commitments, a.k.a. better teams. Well, with that being said, uh, we should go ahead and hop ourselves inside the draft, guys. This will be EG versus Liquid. Munchkin, be quiet. And uh, away we go. So we don't actually have a draft overlay here, but we'll just go in blind. This is what Starlighter gets for not giving us updated titles. They don't get their draft overlay. Ha. Ha. We should have done. Okay. So EG versus Liquid, first overall pick is going to be an Invoker for Liquid, so Bulba will get a Playmaker. Uh, I hear that he made waves with when Invoker was first released in Dota 2, nearly two years ago at this point. But uh, in terms of bans, pretty standard. I think the one interesting thing is that Visage gets through. Now, I cast with PPD the other day, and he said he thinks Visage should never get through, especially not against teams that like to run it. And EG is certainly well, known for running it for Zai, and of course Cloud9 with AUI 2000. You should not let Visage through, unless you're first pick. Okay. Um, and Ember Spirit, I think, is a very good ban out. I think Arteez's Ember Spirit is better than the other Ember Spirits, and is better than his other heroes, so I think it's a good ban coming out from them. They will go with the Batrider Invoker. That's pretty Ten strong uh, opener from Team Liquid. It's just such a flexible opening as well. Like, I guess you know what the lanes are going to be if you're Evil Genius is, but it doesn't really matter. Invoker is a strong 1v1 hero. Very difficult to gank, especially if he goes cross wax. Batrider can transition to the jungle, so it's like Liquid have a lot of adjustments available to them. If mm -hmm. they need to make them, if Bat gets pressured out of lane, uh, he can just rotate jungle. And Invoker, you know, can be flexible with his build. So uh, it's just a very flexible opening. Yeah, from and they, I mean, Bat Rider's good all game, so is Invoker. And Invoker can even go uh, Quas Exord if he wants more late game. And they have multiple ways to initiate, Tornado EMP or just simple Blink Lasso. And that's only from their first two picks. So already, I mean, I kind of like both teams' lineups, though. But Clockwork, he's not the best counter initiator versus Bat Rider, though. He's all right. Yeah. A Shadow Fiend ban. This is just some Arteezy respect. Tinker and Shadow Fiend. Jeez. He's been making big plays. I, I don't know if you saw that. There was a clip, uh, like a highlight on Reddit. I, I think it was from Dream League. One of the big tournaments right now where Arteezy was about to die. He goes Scepters, remaining. blinks out, because uh, like they didn't have any nukes left at that point, so it mm. cools down. He blinks out, time. then he rearms. He Shivas to prevent them from blinking after him, and then he blinks out again. It was like super next level, lived with like 10 health. I mean, the guy is definitely a player, and Tinker definitely a flashy hero that you can make those big plays with. He is a player indeed. So is Mason going to be playing the carry or what? I believe he's just been playing the carry role, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure Arte it's been Arteezy mid, PPD and Zai still the supports, Universe still the offlane. So it's mainly just Mason like standing in for fear, basically. Yeah, Mason's been playing a little bit of everything. He stood in, or when he played, I think uh, we saw him in the offlane. Actually, that was Smogalig. He plays mid a d decent amount. He likes heroes like Storm of Spirit. On the side of Liquid, surprisingly, no player standing in for Koikva. They had Infinity stand in one time. It's like the real late time for EU. The What, what time is it there? Like 1 a.m. now? It's eight hours later. So, yeah, it's after midnight. Yeah. So, and if you're like in CIS, it's even later. I think I've casted two Liquid games, and both of the times Koikva was standing out. So, Team Liquid with their full he's also I, I think he's also had some sort of injury, or uh, I'm mm -hmm. not sure, but I think he's been like taking some time off similar to Fear. So I uh, see. Well, either way, Weaver's the pick for EG. This is a carry they like to run a lot for Fear. And they tend to not draft like true hard carries, like one traditional one positions. They'll go for more of like... Fighter carries? Yeah, fighter carries. Lifesteal or Weaver, 
Um, what Slark. else have we seen? Slark. Yeah, we've actually seen him on, like, yeah, even some gankers at times, and not even, like, carries, per se. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it makes sense when you've got Arteezy. The guy needs space. Great player, but definitely needs space to farm. Yeah, they're not a 4 protect 1 kind of thing. It's more... I wouldn't even call it, like, 3 protect 2. It's just, like, dual core most of the time. Yeah. Arteezy and Fear usually carrying through in the late game. Yeah, I, when I was casting with PPD, he just kept on me like, yeah, we all just make space for Arteezy until he carries. Like, everyone's just making space. <laughs> That's so much space. That's usually how it goes. Yeah, which is pretty much what happens. You know, you give him Shadow Fiend mid, it's OD, it's he rushes crazy. Midas, Naga rushes Radiance. Like, he's Tinker, he's going to farm until he's 5-6 slotted. Shadow so. Fiend. Yeah. He, yeah. he plays Ricer. So, well, what is left for him at this point? Anything... OD does match up pretty well against Invoker mid. That's an option if they want to run It's OD. decent versus Batrider, too. Yeah. It's just not a hero that seems like to run. Oh boy! Oh yeah! That Wraith King! Is, it a, is this a support Skeleton King? I believe so. Hmm. It's either a support Clock or a support Skeleton King. I just feel like that hero is so underwhelming as a carry when you're up against these Liquid heroes. Invoker... EM, also, picking Wraith King's a little risky against Invoker, because that is. Mana Burn can just ruin you. It definitely is. I think like picking him versus an Invoker is one of the scarier things. And that's where making him a support probably makes more sense, because like, sure, maybe he dies, doesn't mana, but... Running him as a core, that could very easily be punished. By but him. if he gets BKB, then you can kind of show up that true. weakness. But yeah, generally, you don't want to run Wraith King versus too many mana burners. Clockwork Invoker, Nick Assassin, the popular three, I'd say. Lion is, eh, he's kind of there. Anti-Mage kind of crushes Wraith King. By kind of, I mean very much so. Yeah, and Anti-Mage this game, Liquid have set up decently where they could look to run it. EG don't have much proper lockdown here. There's the Wraith King stun, and that's maybe familiar stun's hookshot, but... Mm -hmm. I guess they do have some flexibility here with the last pick. Maybe they go for something that has a little more crowd control. Uh, one other hero that Arteezy's been playing a lot of lately is the Morphling as well. Yep. Do you, do you, hmm. I like How do you think Morphling matches up this game? I think he's really good because they don't have any silences. If he gets lassoed, he can just tank up, no problem. Yeah. If he gets swapped and stunned, no problem either. He won't do that great versus Invoker, but it'll be good enough. Um, I think Evil Geniuses will tend to do something that is pretty heavy late game. Morphling is the obvious choice. I'm trying to think of any other carries, farmers in the solo mid lane that RTZ likes to run that aren't banned, and there aren't many left. They banned four pretty much RTZ heroes. Hmm, what else was he running? There's, there's he plays Naga a lot. He plays the Naga's lot. banned, though. Yeah. yeah. So all, all, I mean, most of them are banned. Then the Morph's banned. Okay, they, That's five RTZ bans, man. So what's left? Um, hmm. OD. OD? Okay, yeah. OD's, OD's good enough here. You don't lifesteal off of the orb, though, do you? From the no, escape? you don't. No, just from the... So it's, it's not right quite place. as good, I guess, but... He is also good versus Roche, and with Wraith Kane and OD and Familiars, they could take Roche pretty early, potentially. Mm -hmm. A little tricky against it's Bat. It's just out of favor, I yeah, think. That's it, a, I, I still think it's a strong hero. Oh, it's definitely a strong hero. It's just... I don't... I don't I, I'm, I'm as confused as they are. Well, they do have a minute and a half in the reserve It's time. not often a team will ban five, five heroes remaining. that one player runs. Yeah, we can look at his profile. Let's see. What do you like to run? Reserve time. I don't think we'll see Pudge. I think that's a pretty safe no here. His top three successful heroes, Shadow Feet Invoker, Nature's Crazy. Prophet, Naga Naga, Morphling. Oh boy, this is not what I expected. What is he it? has run Weaver mid once in a while. He has run Weaver Oh mid. yeah, this is So true. it could be an Arteezy Weaver. That's the other possibility. This was back when he was playing for speed. He used to play uh, Weaver a fair amount. So Razor. That actually synergizes pretty well with Wraith Kane, right? You steal all that damage and then your life stealing it back. Yeah, it's at the same time, nice it's like it's, there's no good hero to use it on. And Liquid hasn't picked their melee carry yet. It yeah, will this definitely is a four ranged lineup. Yes. It, it will definitely dissuade a life stealer pick. So no infest bombs, or very unlikely to be infest bombs. I mean, Team Liquid does have a lot of single target spells. Rubik with three, Ventral with two. So the unstable current will be decent, but most Razors go for BKB anyways. Looks like the Drow Ranger will be the last pick. No surprise there with a non melee hero. But Drow Ranger, Silence, very good versus Weaver. Other than that, I mean, Wraith King can just be up in her face, but it looks like it will be a solo mid razor, a safe lane weaver, and a support Wraith King. So, a lot of our questions have been answered. Well, I do like the Drow in terms of they have five ranged heroes, and they have the Venjara. So, this team will be packing a punch in theory. Now, the one concern is that whenever you run Drow, you really want to stay away from the enemy teams. Your team gets the bonus damage. Obviously, you're squishing easily killed off, and... That's where if SK gets a Blink Dagger, you've got Clockwork with Hookshot. They've got some gap closers. Even Weaver will just probably look to jump the Drow once he gets the items out. And it will be Mason playing that, so 
Arteezy will take his, his talents to the middle lane. Mm -hmm. Is he going to play versus Boba? The maybe, they, maybe the hero swap is the other possibility. Razor Vogue versus Voker. Eh, seems pretty fair. Oh, I was really... I was going in deep there, man. All right. Well, we'll, in well, we'll introduce the teams here now. It's Liquid versus EG. One of the biggest matches for Starlight or America. Only one of the eight teams in Starlight America can go to Kiev. Who's it going to be? Maybe we'll find out with this game here. You've got Zai handling the support Wraith King. Mason standing in for fear, playing that carry weaver. Universe on the clockwork. Arteezy will be taking the razor mid. PPD on the visage. And then over to Team Liquid. A team that has looked lost at times as of late. We won't get too much into the fluff blog, but they've had some problems. Struggling to kind of recapture their identity. You've got way too on your venge here. No longer doing the drafts. TC on the drought. Uh-oh. Now he'll spot them out. Should be able to back off. Fluff playing the Rubik, though. Oh, drops the ward there. He'll retreat. Are they going to cut him off? Did they see him place the ward? Did they have sentries? I think they. Someone saw him. Because they had a. Uh, no one has sentries, though. They'd someone. Come, I forget who it was now, but they had someone up the cliff who saw him. But uh, yeah, no sentries anyway. And, well, TC on the drow, I already mentioned. We've got Bulba going mid. Boots first, Exhort Invoker. He is expecting to get roamed on hard. And this Koikfa Batrider. Oh, I, actually, I guess the boots is just for the Razor then. He wants to be able to break the link easier. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be that, like, when, when we saw a lot of OD Razor mid. Razor play OD players started going boots so that they could get break the link easier. Then Razor players started going boots so that the link couldn't be broken so easily. But Arteezy hasn't gone boots, so this could turn out to be a problem for him in terms of stealing a lot of damage. Yeah, at the same time, Razor, he's still decently strong even without static link. I think Plasma Field's a very underrated nuke in that mid lane. Yeah, there was a period where players were just like skipping the nuke entirely. Against OD, you know, you right. might not have mana, so you just skip it. Max the, the two pass, the unstable current and the static link. But. Well, he's not against OD this game, so... It's also where I'm interested to see how strong Liquid get in the mid game. If they do get their items up, Ben, they have quite the damage output here. Just from the Drow Aura, the Venge Aura, as well as the Forge Spirit. So Liquid have a lot of damage. My only concern is can they stay alive? They have a very good Roche lineup. Looks like Quickfo will get stunned out here already. He's got boots. He should be okay, but he hasn't skilled Firefly yet. He really is just reluctant to use it, I guess. Well, he goes into the trees. Now he'll be forced to pop it. I don't... I don't... I don't know why he decided to take so much damage yeah. there. If he had a salve, maybe, but yeah, he took a lot of damage, didn't really And he really used it anyway. That. Yeah. That hurts. Well, Universe is cogging in the creeps here. Uh, we have not seen Liquid. You know, one team's one thing that teams have done with Bat in the past is just Firefly over these trees to break it so that he can't stack creeps back there, but we're not seeing it. And actually, he's, he's forced to block the wave really far back. Yeah, and he's still in a very critical HP range, only using one of his four tangos. Looks like EG will have the better ward placement, though, at the start of this one, not spotted out by the sentry, and the radiant supports will not have access to that pool, and they don't really have any good junglers, too, so they may very well be underleveled if they can't get any early kills. Razor actually going for the non-static link build. Yeah, and that's where Fluff, he wants to walk in mid, but there's a dire observer ward here. He's already been spotted anyway, as it is daytime, and he might try to harass Arteezy, but... No, he can't really do much. Arteezy's like, what are you up to, buddy? You're level 1 Rubik. Come at me. Yeah, he has a ton of stats, too. 4 strengths, or 5 strength, rather, so very unlikely to die early. Especially for an Exhort Invoker, you're not really scared until he gets, like, maybe level 4-ish. Yeah, and I, well, we'll see. Pull, but for so far, it does appear to be... I guess the thing with the Exhort build this game is they're more just counting on it for, like, the Aura. Where you just get, like, the familiars in the mid-game, you can pop the Drow ult and just push really hard, but... Love taking a lot of they don't have much synergy for the Sunstrike. Actually pulls Arteezy in here. Rather bold. If there was a point in Static Link, I feel like that might have been a kill opportunity for Arteezy. Oh. Yeah. But he doesn't have it, so. But yeah, there's not... I was just thinking, like, there's not really much Sunstrike setup. I guess there's the Venge stun, the Rubik stun, but... Lasso. Yeah. But that's more, like, mid-game oriented, even. Because this Rubik and Venge do want to get their levels up. Mm-hmm. And pretty level dependent. No one's really getting levels on Liquid. Koikba is still sitting at level 1. Venge sitting at level 2. Just at level 2. And Rubik sitting at level 2. He does have an invisibility rune. Still trying to harass out Arteezy. But Arteezy's at full HP. He does have one level on unstable current. So I don't think they can kill him. I mean, what do you think about their decision making here? Because most teams in this situation would just start stacking the jungle. Like, sure, they saw EG go into their woods. But they know that they didn't cross this line. Like, they definitely didn't go, uh, you know, in deep into the woods. So there's at least two camps to stack. And I guess they may, they, they've had some trouble with the failed D ward, as you mentioned, but he's just sitting mid and not doing anything. I guess Arteezy's playing a bit more defensively, but mm -hmm. he's getting his levels. He's still 8-1. I don't feel like Fluff is doing enough to justify this. 
Yeah, RTZ is still out leveling Boba too, just by a tiny bit. And maybe if they can get a kill opportunity, but Artis is not really trading harass with Boba. He's still sitting at 700 HP. I think they need to get him down to like the 500 HP range. Where Look he's at close this, man. They're just so everybody. Cool. This is a hate train. They banned five of the man's heroes, and then they four man him mid. And they've seen way to make this rotation. And Artis comes in. He's like, "Hello, buddy. Universe is here. This is gonna be your first blood." There's cogs available. Way to nothing to do but just feed away a kill. That was just a very. Rotate I mean, four heroes in and still give up first blood. And yeah, and the top lane's pushy as well. So, so there's some experience being missed here. Although it looks like they did another pull to draw back. I don't think it's that important to shut down a Razor this early. I, it's I, important I, to shut down Arteezy in general, but this is not really an Arteezy hero, right? It's, you know, like if he's running Tinker or Shadow Fiend, like a more snowball hero, it would make a lot of sense, but he sh he's Razor. Like, Razor's not that scary. And he won a defensive build too with the early unstable current. That's and, true. I mean. It's just not easy to kill him, and it's not that important. You still have to worry about this Weaver, you still have to worry about everybody pulling on top, Raid King already level 3, Visage getting there, and their supports are just going to be, like, they're not going to have their ultimates until maybe like 12 minutes. It's not just changes. the supports, it's the Koifa bat. on RTZ. Yeah, he picks up a haste, but nothing he can really do against the Razor. If you run on him, he just starts stealing your damage. But it's not just the supports, Ben, it's the bat. They haven't stacked the woods a single time for him, it's already 4 mm -hmm. minutes in. These could be quad stacks, but he's got nothing. Yeah. And now, now the first realm comes for EG, and this one gonna be a success. Bulba eats a stun to the face, damage being stolen, no points at wax, and he'll go down. Gets off the cold snap here, maybe the Forge Spear can get the kill. His eye on the way out, but that early SK rotation, much more effective, and it only took one hero. Yep, and Koikpa's coming back to mid, but now he won't be able to stack, it looks like. So, yeah, all in all, this liquid early game is going very, very poorly. Already, already we see 2,500 experience lead and a 1,500 gold lead for EG. Meanwhile, top is just completely uncontested. And can Drow Ranger really do that much? I don't think so. I don't like Drow. She's just, in this game, EG have good gap closers. They'll have an SK with a blink eventually, I imagine. They already have the clockwork. And the I, I feel like there's like always gap closers though. Yeah, like what game of Dota doesn't have them? But right. if they do, then that's where Drow's just kind of eh. She's she's okay. She's like not terrible. She I needs think. so much farm to win like 1v1s as well. Yeah. Which is why you see players like Envy, they just go for the like, I'm never gonna be near an enemy hero build unless I'm chasing them with Mask of Madness, Blink Dagger, but Midas. Good luck staying away from Weaver and Clockwork. Let and alone potentially the Blink S Wraith King, yeah. I keep yeah. on calling him Skeleton King. She's also just, I mean, she gets HOD, doesn't really synergize that well with her orb. I mean, you can like hit it on and off, but I don't know. It's just, there's something I don't like about that hero. A lot of things, actually. <laughs> but I did like the change to Gust. It gives her like a slight yes. reposition, but it's still yes. not enough. The hero just feels underwhelming. And like, oh, Quakefist going to miss his stack now, so do they, I think they'll just barely, yeah, they'll get this off, but it's Gollum, so... On top of just poor efficiency from Liquid, now they've got some bad luck going their way as well. Missing the one stack here for Koikfa, getting Golems here. They, I mean, already they're down 3,000 experience. This is a, they've given up two kills, but they're down three take experience. That is a ridiculous deficit for this early in the game. And they have the worst late game too. And EG are playing it well. I mean, EG are just relaxed. They're on the dire side. They know they've got the SKR. They'll have familiars later on. They can go for Roche. Fairly early this game, if they take a few effective fights, and you look at their offlaner, Universe is level 5, so he's getting his levels up. They'll, and they, he doesn't need a big item to jump in and start the fight, so... Yeah, Liquid are... they have their backs up against it already, and we're only 6 minutes in. Yeah, I think a lot of it just stemmed from that early level 1 smoke, where they gain control of Liquid's jungle before the creeps even spawn. Because it forces supports to do something that they don't want to do, which is try and get a kill on a very difficult to kill hero in mid, and not just get easy levels, not get easy stacks for Batrider. Yeah, they st again, they still could have stacked these camps, though. Oh, he missed the stack here, too. So, yeah, just a lot of things not going oh, well. Oh, bottom lane. There is a stun here. They initiate on fluff. In comes the, the drow silence, the gust, but it's just not enough. And Quakefo will be next. It looks like there's another stun. He pops his firefly. The golden roshan flies by as he watches the bat burn. He'll hightail it out of there, but... Well, the, what does drow do here? Tries to finish her Midas and not die, I guess. But even with her Midas, like, there's... It, they need way too many items right now. They need a blink on Batrider, which is not coming anytime soon. They need big items on Invoker. He's also going for Midas, and I think that EG, they have a lineup that they can just continually exert pressure on Liquid and not really let them farm up with the Midas and catch up. I mean, look at these two supports. Look how aggressively they're playing. Yeah, and they, it's a lot because they just know how poor Liquid are, and I like this a lot from EG. They're ahead. Let's get even more ahead. The Midas comes out now. Some Artosis Dota. 
from Yuji. Meanwhile, they'll dive mid. In comes I with the stun. The plasma field, I think, just barely missed him on the way back, but Bulba will still fall. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that was just an easy kill. I'm liking the Wraith King. He's, I think he's a very good roaming support. He's tankier than heroes like Bench. He still does a lot of... He's, his nuke is quite strong compared to other stuns because it's got the slow component as well. Mm -hmm. So I think he's in... I think Wraith King's is, okay. Is he better than Ven as a roamer? He's definitely an all... I feel he's just an awful carry though. Attack. Like Maybe you could run in like the way CIS do and China is just like a frontline tank more than a carry, but... Yeah. Yeah, I feel he's his, mostly... His role's just different. Yeah. Mm, he's okay. I'm Sorry. still not a huge fan of the Wraith King, but they're making it work. Yeah, we've been wrong before. Maybe we'll be wrong he's with this. He's good versus Doom. <laughs> yeah, he's the attack. Doom counter, man. Yeah, that's that's true. And Liquid now are... Look at just how defensively they're playing. They're four heroes bottled up mid. And this leaves TC on an island bottom. And he's about to die, it looks like. Has just bought his Midas. Observer gets plopped down, and the rocket scouts him out. Will there be a quadruple TP reaction? It ain't gonna matter. He'll just melt. Drow. Easy kill. Very easy hero to bring down. And this did is with, spend, he did spend his gold before he died. Yeah, he bought the Midas, but this is a lot of value being lost. Not actually using it. I guess he needed to fly it out, so it's, it's just a free TP, man. Attack. It works out beautifully. <laughs> not so beautiful for Liquid. Things are not sunny right now in Liquid land. Over under on when they get their first kill. Is under attack. Ooh. Well, they have Sunstrike. And they'll have... Has anyone even really been that low? Radiant structures mm -hmm. They'll have to blink dagger. Like, at some point, they'll get a kill. Oh, I know. I know. I was just wondering over under. I would say within two minutes after the blink is picked up. That's that's a long time. That's like... That's like 14 minutes. Yeah, like 13, 14 minutes. Radiant's bottom tower is well, under Mason attack. has his Midas up. 1,200 gold to boot. Yeah, he's had it. This was the second usage, I believe. So, that was a very fast Midas. Invoker kind of forced to do you ancient at this point. I mean, like you mentioned, EG took over their jungle, but they've kept control over it. They've actually driven the drought off the bottom lane. Bulba's afraid to go into the woods, and so they're tri-laning top. But they're doing it with these rather underleveled supports. This could go poorly if there's a rotation, which there is right now. Arteezy comes in, Invoker has just picked up his Midas, and they're gonna smoke to try and retreat quicker. Liquid know they're in trouble, the smoke barely gets them out of range. But in comes Arteezy regardless, the slow's there on Pluff. Now on comes the swarm, and the did he just drag him towards him? I think he dra dragged him this way. Oh boy! Oh. Well, the dive continues. TC will be next. Drow, just such food. Oh boy! Oh boy, indeed. They're in a lot of trouble, and they they just blew a smoke to try and escape, and still lost two as well. Yeah, the hookshot That's... narrowly missed. It could have been worse. They have two Midases, but EG have a Midas of their own, and EG are going to start taking towers now. And once these towers start falling, as Bulba could be next on the list. Zai thinking about a stun. The Drow Silent Snoop comes out there, but Bulba, don't be okay for now. Sunstrike the fly. It is going to connect, but it's spread evenly between two. Now Quakefa dragging one in, but he's going to throw his life away. Arteezy posting up, now trying to avoid the flames as he retreats back out. Universe, TPing home. He does need a heal here. The lift in PPD, but already there's an SK ult. He can go ham here. Peasants, fear me. He goes in with the slow, and now the stun will follow, and that's another easy kill. Another peasant crushed beneath the Wraith King's boot. <laughs> I like his voice, uh, his voice acting. Have you played him recently and heard his voices? That's pretty Did funny. they change it from Skeleton King? Um, I'm not sure. I, I like the old Skeleton King acting. Yeah, it, it was, it was pretty, pretty good. He has some good lines. This is a weird looking Wraith King though. That's an ugly ass mask. I think it's one of the new sets. Okay. He has a big sword. So this is pretty much Roche. Like, I don't see how Liquid can test this. No Blink Dagger on the bat. No Cosplex Invoker to control around the pit. And they have two Midas's. They, they just have to forfeit a Roche. Whenever EG wants it, it's there for the taking. Gold lead's only 10,000. What's that? Gold lead's only 10,000. <laughs> the way you delivered it, I was like, wait, I've got to do a double take here. <laughs> yeah, only 10k at 11 minutes. It's almost the vaunted 1,000 gold deficit per minute accrued mark. Yeah. That is the sign of just getting crushed, but... You know, if like, EG gets sloppy, they can get they can turn this off. And they don't have their yeah. bat blink yet. In fairness, they have a very good damage based lineup with the auras. <laughs> so if they can somehow protect the drow, they'll hit hard. But it's a lot of ifs right now for Liquid. And for EG, it's pretty much just this guaranteed Roche going their way. If Liquid try to fight this. This could go very poorly. Already, there's a drums out on RTZ. Akila's up as well. A lot of early to mid game items. They will smoke. Go for the Weaver here, but it's a level four Ruby. Can't even spell steal. Just drops a sentry, they'll throw the sun strike. it isn't enough damage, the time lapse is available. 
And now he's gonna turn around. This will be at least one support dead. Wait till he's gonna TP out. Fluff, no TP. He'll fall. And it just completely backfires. And they get Roach as well. And this one going EG's way. 11-0. I don't really... I, I guess maybe they figure with Sunstrike they'd have the burst to bring down Mason, but... They did not have the damage. That's a hurts. level 4 Rubik. Yep. Batrider does that blink now. It's just hard for the bat. I'm just thinking, like, who's he gonna initiate on? If he goes in, Wraith King's obviously a bad target. Although his ult is on cooldown, but... Radiant's just not a target you wanna focus anyway. I don't... The burst for the Weaver is possible with the lasso, but... They have silence to follow. Yeah. Too. Weaver's probably the best, but... You definitely don't want to go on the Razor. He yeah, has, he's got Aegis. He has Aegis and he has Unstable Current. And Universe then. probably isn't a good choice here. He's got 1,000 HP and a 4 staff, so... He probably won't be in a position anyways. Yeah, he'll be the one looking to start the fight, so... And Visage has Gravekeepers and it's just Visage. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. There's no easy targets. And the thing is, if Liquid go for a gank, how obvious will it be? You look at EG's map vision right now. All the lanes are pushing past the river now. These ones are all well past it and the bottom lane's really pushing in, so... They've just been boxed in, and Liquid need to find a way to make plays. It looks like at this point, they kind of want to get their level 6 on the Rubik. Just farm TC up, but they'll smoke now. They'll make, they'll go for something here. The Forge Spirits are on the front lines. They're smoked up as well. Uh, who are they going to run into, though? That's the question. Hopefully not the Wraith King. Even with the Weaver, they've got to get the jump on him before he's able to time-lapse back or Sakuchi out. Do they have dust? They have sentries on in, on the vengeful, but that's it. Yeah, and even if with the dust, he can always just time lapse out of this it. This is already TPing top, anticipating a gank. Mason in. Ooh. No, Quake Fat hasn't broken the smoke yet, though. This could work out pretty well. There's five heroes top. Maybe Liquid will get that big kill they desperately need. Mason. Oh boy, he's already Sakuchi. The sentries get plopped down. He has been cold snapped. The magic missiles there as well, but he just time lapses out, turns the fight, and now Liquid are in a headlong retreat. Bulba marching back. He'll drop an ice wall here, try to run, try to live. While, meanwhile, the Batrider has lassoed in universe, but he's still alive. He won't fall here. Liquid, not the best focus fire. The Rubik also fell on the back. Why didn't he lasso the Weaver? I thought he was going to lasso the Weaver and get a kill. They were almost there. Now, I think nice. they thought they had him. No, you know what it was? He got fogged. They dropped the sentry a second late, and Weaver was already out of Sakuchi range. Mm. Then they magic missiled him, cold snapped him, and I'm not sure why he didn't lasso him at that point. Because, like, right... Yeah. Right around here. Yeah, I know he got fucked with this. Yeah, I thought they could get him like as he was getting burst down with magic missiles. But still, 14 minutes in, Liquid still kill us. They just look lost. This is my yeah. first time casting Liquid in a long time. They, they, they've they been kind of looking like this for a while. I thought that Fluff being reinstated as captain would change things around. I'm actually lagging a little Radiant's bit. Um, but we're lagging to NA servers? Really? I don't know. Oh, this man. Is just looking There's ugly. BTS internet on the way up. Fortified. It's ugly, man. It's, it's not lagging for me. So. Maybe you should get your shit together. Gosh, computer. Come on. Come on now. Well, they're pushing top, and they've got this SK here. Balling out of control already. He's almost got a Sanj up. Two heroes push through the mid. EG. Arge it almost just looks like an, a, a pub stomp, honestly. They're up 13 to 0. Liquid, you asked when will they get on the board, LD, and... The answer is they may not get on the board unless EG feeds. <laughs> oh, man. Seriously. Maybe they want to get one kill before the game is over. This has to be one of the ugliest Liquid performances. And just in terms of like how one-sided the game has been that I've seen in a long time. Not to take anything away from EG, but they're using a stand-in, too. Yeah. This is this is painful to witness. Very painful. Well, they want to they wanna leave with some honor. Yeah, my computer's lagging. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Eh, well, huddling up their base, they have one T2 left. Don't Rosh worry, you're not missing a whole lot right now. Roshan will expire in a couple of minutes, but maybe they can drag someone up the cliff in the T3 and get some kills. Well, they're smoked again. Here they go. But how is a smoke gank like this going to be successful? Mid lane's pushed into the base. There's an Observer War top. So if Liquid aren't showing heroes in the lanes, EG should realize it within a matter of seconds. And they're going to the enemy woods, but actually EG's just occupied their own jungle. Occupy Liquid's the name of the game here for EG. And they'll start pushing through the bottom lane. They do have Universe ready to hookshot in mid. He's just looking to make plays at this Radiant's point. The Lincolns comes out on the Weaver. There's still a tier 1 up mid. And if Liquid don't back off Radiant's right about now, the feeds could commence. Universe jumps in, but he does get Lasso TC. Can he secure the first kill of Liquid's game? He's done it! Universe will fall. Quake for barely to live. But suddenly PP shows up, and they just they GG wanted the kill. out. They wanted the kill. <laughs> they get they salvage the game in that sense. They, they get at least a... a unblemished record of EG is broken and 
Liquid, just call it. Most one-sided game I've ever watched Liquid play. 20,000 deficit in gold. Best summary for this game is Universe is a theater. 0-1. Or 1-1. One, one. Jeez. Please, Feed. please report. <laughs> theater. Well, Liquid, they need a... They, I, are they even going to make the playoffs for America? How many teams comes out of America? I mean, if is there is a North American qualifier, I'm feeling like you kind of have to invite Liquid because it's hard to make a list of eight teams. That oh, no, 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 I'm better. talking about Star Ladder. Oh, Star Ladder. Um, are they going to make it out? I don't know. That's actually a good question. Well, let's hide our in-game overlay. And is it is it one team or two teams that's out of NA? I only one I team. Forget. Only one team comes from NA. Two from China, one from Korea, four from Europe. Well, I'm pretty sure that EG will... It's looking like EG yeah. right now. I actually think Revenge is pretty legit. They're, I don't. I don't they're really. Definitely I, legit. They're better than Liquid right now. They're way better than Liquid right now, which is not something I'd ever expect to have said before this. But let's be honest, man. Liquid just look lost. That's you know, I cast that Liquid versus LGD game at TI three, right? That was something to behold. But this is this team is in need of leadership. I don't know. It's it's easy to speculate from the sidelines, but well, something's rotten. Looking forward to the next match, we have Revenge versus Osiris. That, I think that should actually be a very good game. They are second and third place. I believe they have close to the same record, and they're pretty yep. decently matched. I would say maybe Revenge has a slight edge, but Osiris, they came out of the qualifiers looking pretty hot, uh, just coming behind Team Dog, and they almost beat Team Dog, too, in the qualifiers. So Revenge is the only other undefeated team mm -hmm. in, the, in the group as well, so Smash, that should be a good match. Smash Dota. Smash is a, a beast. He's he a actually he, he's gotten the RTZ seal of approval. <laughs> he said, "I think he's actually not bad," which is like RTZ saying you're very good, basically. He's but, not bad. Yeah, we'll take a break, guys. We'll come back for what will be our final match of Starlighter America for the day. Thank you all for watching. I'm LD. He's Merlini. We'll be right back.